everybody welcome back to my channel how is everybody doing in this video today we are taking a look into the case of Jody Myers Jody was a young woman who was murdered by people who were close to her and their fake tears on several news outlets would actually increase the suspicions on them. This was a situation where every time they talked and shed an invisible tear, the police and Jody's family were more and more convinced they had something to do with Jody's disappearance and ultimate death. Want to know how the story unfolded? First, let's start from the beginning. At the time of her murder, Jody Myers was a young 20-year-old woman who lived in Manham, South Australia. Jody had a stepfather named David, her mother Lucy, and two sisters. According to her family, Jody was someone who was happy, she had always a smile on her face, and she loved life. Her family described her as a good mother, she adored her son Elijah, a toddler she had along with her fiancé Neil Archer. Neil Archer was a 31-year-old man who had three brothers and he lived with his mother Margaret, and he was her favorite. According to Neil's brother Aaron, Neil was crafty, hands-on, but not very bright. Aaron described him as street smart, and both of them were very close. Neil eventually moved up the road where he lived to move in with Jody and their son Elijah. But Jody's family didn't like Neil, and they were very concerned with the relationship. They described 31-year-old Neil Archer as unreliable and as someone not to be trusted. Besides not trusting Neil, Jody's family believed Jody wasn't happy. They described Neil as very controlling of Jody. Jody wasn't allowed to text some people. She wasn't allowed to visit people without him being there. He had access to her personal stuff like Facebook. Jody herself admitted to her family she finally could see that Neil was trying to keep her away from them. Early 2015, Jody had had enough of Neil and also his mother. She told her family she was going to leave Neil, and Neil was suspicious of this. He knew she wanted to leave. While Neil was talking to Jody's brother-in-law Michael, he told Michael Jody's family was trying to separate him and Jody. And he also told Michael he would kill Jody if she left him. But the thing with the relationship is, there was another player who Jody also had a relationship with. And that person was Margaret Archer, Neil's mother. Margaret controlled her son's lives, and that means she wanted to control Jody too. Neil's brother Aaron described Margaret as very smart and also someone not to be messed around. Margaret adored Neil, her favorite son, and she also adored her grandson Elijah, but she couldn't care less for Jody. Every time Neil and Jody had an argument, Margaret would always take Neil's side, and Neil and Jody fought regularly. And when this happened, Margaret, as evil as she was and still is, would take Elijah inside the house and lock Jody out, saying she couldn't get her son. Neil and Margaret were a duo and they would go down as a duo as well. On August 26, 2015, Jody and Neil went to a family barbecue. It was Jody's stepfather's birthday. And while Jody was there celebrating with the family, Neil actually stayed in the car. Jody then left the party with Neil, and that was the last time Jody's family saw her alive. Two days later, after Jody's family had last seen her, Jody's mother received a text from Jody's phone. The text said Jody had left Neil, she was with friends, and that she would contact her mother later on. But the text was odd to Lucy. She didn't believe what was said in the text. Two things stood out in that text. First and most important, Jody would never abandon her son Elijah. And second, the text had spelling errors and Lucy knew Jody didn't make that kind of misspelling. It was unusual for Jody. Lucy then told her other daughter about the text and her daughter immediately told Lucy that wasn't Judy texting and that's when they went to the police and filed a missing persons report on Judy. 
Judy. The police search for Judy and clues all over the town of Manham and they also look the riverbanks of the Murray River. But at the same time, Neil was telling everyone that he had been abandoned by Jody and left Elijah behind. And then he started his 15 minutes of fame giving interviews to news stations and he liked all the media attention. During his interviews, Neil pleaded Jody to come back or contact someone. He talked about Jody and how good of an influence she was in his life. She was the love of his life. And I want to put out that he actually spoke about Jody in the past tense. And this is a major red flag. Usually people, when they talk about their loved ones who are still alive, they talk about them in the present tense not the past when they talk about them in the past usually they know the person isn't alive anymore allegedly he was also asked if he had killed jody and he said no they also asked him if he had been the one sending the text to lucy and he said no it wasn't but neil's behavior for a man who loved his fiance and was desperate for her to come back was very odd he actually looked happy and smiled on several occasions while trying to wipe the tears that weren't there to begin with. And these crocodile tears were something Neil shared with his mother. Margaret also gave interviews and pleaded Jody to come back at the same time she was shedding invisible tears. And she also talked about how she had an amazing relationship with Jody, even though it was far from the truth. But Jody's family at this point believed Neil and Margaret had something to do with Jody's disappearance. And as the investigations continued, Neil and Margaret told the police Jody had left with a couple in a red car, which the police released the photos of the model, hoping someone would come forward with some information. While getting other information about the case, the police became more and more suspicious of Neil and Margaret. The police believed Jody hadn't left and abandoned her son Elijah. They focused on the text allegedly sent by Jody to her mother after she disappeared. And things were alarming because Jody's family told the police that text wasn't written by Jody because of the spelling errors. The police also discovered Jody's ATM card was used to withdraw $250 after she disappeared. After that, her mobile phone was also recharged with credits. And Neil denied it using the card, but guess what the police discovered? While checking CCTV footage, the police discovered Neil and his mother Margaret using Jody's card the day after she disappeared. They took $250, Jody's savings, and this was something they never mentioned and also denied doing it. While continuing investigating CCTV footage, Margaret was seen inside a store using Jody's money to buy a recharge voucher for Jody's phone. Then she is seen going into Neil's Green Ford. They parked the car and remained there. And during that time, Jody's phone was recharged and the text to Jody's mother was sent. There was also CCTV footage of Margaret at a hardware store. She was seen buying a lot of cement and she did it with Jody's money, which was taken from her account. The police at this point believed mother and son duo had something to do with the disappearance and possible murder of Jody Myers. Also adding to this, Neil's stepfather Lawrence, who had been away when Jody disappeared, told the police Neil had put concrete badly on the shed floor as a Father's Day gift. But Lawrence thought this was hard because Neil was lazy. Even though Neil was confident about getting away with the evil he had done, he started to feel a lot of pressure, so he decided to confide to his brother Aaron about what he had done. Neil told Aaron he had killed Jody, and Aaron asked him why. Neil said because Jody was going to leave him and take Elijah. Then Aaron asked Neil how he did it, 
and Neil said he had strangled Jody with the cord from his hoodie, which you can see him wearing during his media interviews. Aaron asked where Jody was and Neil responded she was under the shed. Neil then asked Aaron what he should do and Aaron told him to turn himself in. But Neil of course didn't do that. However, Aaron went to the police and told him what Neil had told him. And with this information, the detectives went to the house and searched for Jody. The body of Jody with the cord around her neck was discovered in a shallow grave under the concrete in the shed. Concrete which was paid with her own money. Neil and Margaret were arrested. Neil was charged of murder and Margaret was charged of helping her son cover up the crime. Neil Archer pleaded guilty of murdering Jody after losing control during an argument. The judge sentenced him to 22 years in prison and called Neil a controlling individual who believed he owned his partner's life. Neil never showed remorse for what he did. Margaret went to trial and she was found guilty and sentenced to six years in prison. Experts in the area claim both Neil and Margaret were actually psychopaths. They were very controlling and had no remorse to inflict evil upon others. Even though Margaret was never charged for the murder of Jody, Jody Meyer's family believed Margaret Archer was involved in the killing, allegedly. And so this is the story of Jody Myers and her senseless death. I was surprised in a good way on the fact that Aaron, Neil's brother, actually told the police what Neil had done. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it was just because of him that the police solved the case, but he confirmed the police's suspicions. Eventually, the police was going to arrest Neil, given the evidence they actually already had. The CCTV footage and the statements of Neil's stepfather about the concrete Neil had laid on the floor in the shed, and also the CCTV footage of Margaret buying the cement. All of this combined would, of course, lead police to search the shed and they would eventually find Jody. But still, we can't dismiss Aaron's actions and I'm sure Jody's family was thankful he told the police. In my opinion, Margaret's sentence wasn't fair. What do you think?